Hi, I'm Claire. And I'm Kayla. Um, so today, in light of the election that's coming up, um, legalization of marijuana um, is on the ballot for the upcoming election in Michigan. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today in our dialogue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. to start, where do you stand in terms of legalization of marijuana? Are you for it or against it? Yeah, so, um, A, thank you for asking, um, but also I am someone, um, I don't like to make a claim on something unless I'm fully educated on it and I don't really feel like I am fully right. educated on it, um, which is something I'm trying to become in order to vote in the election in the right. best way I possibly can. Um, mm-hmm. But I have been doing a little bit more research on it lately. Mm -hmm. Um, It's something that's hard for me to get behind Mm -hmm. in the sense that um, just the way I've seen it been used in family and friends, Mm -hmm. um, just how it's affected their life and kind of like their brain in a way, Mm -hmm. um, I do recognize that it would bring some benefits like um, to the economy and then um, also the medicinal, medicinal, right? Medicinal (laughs) use of it. like, I, I totally understand those uses. It's just mm-hmm. something that I think it scares me, right. um, just the recre- recreational use of it. Right. Um, it's something that I don't fully understand. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the moment, I'm kind of against legalizing it, and I have always been on, um, so, like, of a smaller group on that end. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we took polls in my high school classes, and I always voted... Um, against it and so it's something because I recognize that so many people are for it I want to understand why and Mm -hmm. all that but that's kind of where I stand in the moment yeah Mm -hmm. and do you feel like it opens the door for other drugs to have the potential for more use or do you feel is it more just a concern about marijuana specifically yeah I think it's more of a concern about marijuana specifically Um, I think a couple years ago I would have probably honestly said it was a gateway drug okay but I've definitely been challenged in that belief and um and I watched a documentary recently Mm -hmm. about 13th I don't know if you've seen it um but it's basically about the war on drugs the political Mm -hmm. um stance of that and I don't believe it's a gateway drug as much as it's kind of the same fear as alcohol okay um alcoholism and just kind of the severe effects it could have yeah um, and I don't think everyone would misuse it, mm-hmm. but I think it does open the door for some misuse. Um, I do have some concerns about if people are smoking it, lung, um, lung health, time. yes. Right. Um, so I don't think it's a gateway drug, and I think that that was kind of a political uh, standpoint made by presidents in the past or administration in the past. Okay. Um, so I think it's just in, I had friends in high school that now smoke every day, and mm. I think what scares me is people not being in reality. Right. Um, And it's an escape from reality. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a fear behind me knowing that people don't want to live in the reality, if that makes any sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. so what I'm hearing is not necessarily the benefits in terms of what it can do economically, Mm -hmm. but more so how it affects people and how they live their lives. Yes. And how they're able to be present. Yes. And be Mm -hmm. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so something that I also am always kind of thrown with is... Mm -hmm. um, or people come back with is the alcohol. Um, you know, if alcohol is legal, it's, you know, you are not in the same state of mind as you are when you're sober when you right. drink alcohol. Right. And I think that's so true. It's just something that's been in my life ever since I've grown up. Mm-hmm. So it's just hard for me to view it as the same. And I recognize that that's like, a, I should try to view it as right. also something that is, but because I don't struggle with it personally, mm-hmm. like that's what I'm trying to get at, if gotcha. that makes any sense. But, um, yeah, I think that just both of them can, people use it as an escape from reality, and I guess just legalizing it, to me, also, at this point, sounds like encouraging, and I know that's not the point, but right. it does scare me. Right. It, I think it's just a fear. Right, mm-hmm. and I think I agree with that. Um, yeah. On a lot of levels, mm-hmm. in terms of, like, I don't like the idea of constantly escaping from reality, and I know that doesn't happen, because, like, as a 21-year-old, like, I'm challenged with making sure I drink responsibly right. and I don't mm-hmm. overdo it. Yes. And then the same thing with recre- or recreational drug use, specifically marijuana. And like coming from a state where it's been legalized for a few years. Right, right, from California, right? Right, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting to see that. And I mean, I'm from a smaller town. Like I'm not right in the city in San Francisco. Okay, yeah. So I feel like the legalization of marijuana did nothing in terms of like the area that I'm from okay but that's very specific to that town yes Mm -hmm. was that um like the legalization in your town was that um 
before or after the city, or was it separate from the city's legalization, or was I mean, it all like, one process? I think, I, like, to be honest, like, I'm not well versed in how that works. Right, I think right. when they legalized it in California, it's oh, just state, statewide. right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, because I know that some cities, I think, work towards legalizing right. it, mm-hmm. but I didn't know if that was Right, but true there haven't been shops that have really popped up that I've okay. noticed, Yeah, but I'm also not home a ton. Right, <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But that I've noticed, like, and I've seen a lot of changes within the area that I grew up in, and okay. like, just in California yeah. in general, Yeah, but mm-hmm. I haven't seen major differences with that, and I think part of the reason why is because it's meant to be, I think policy-wise, I'm not sure on this, but I'm thinking it's meant to be like a decriminalization type of thing, um, and in terms of that, it takes business away from all these local dealers, and like you, I share that concern and fear about if we're using these drugs safely and appropriately and with friends like I know a ton of kids in high school who had dealers mm-hmm, and like they were constantly mm-hmm. relying on that yeah it almost hurts those people takes away from their business which I think is good um because they shouldn't be giving people drugs especially when those drugs aren't necessarily clean or um, safe no, not regulated right, right. right. and mm-hmm. they're not regulated so I mean at least by regulating it you have a little bit more insurance that like what you see is what you get. Because you can't say, I'm selling marijuana, right. but it's really cocaine. <laughs> right. Right? You know right. what I yes. yes. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, in that sense, I feel a little bit more at ease. But at the same time, I still do have that fear. Right. And especially mm-hmm. with the drug, the war on drugs, like you're saying. Yes. I haven't seen that documentary, but I know that's something that hits close to home for me. Not yes. with family, necessarily, but just in general. I've just seen too many people who've had their lives changed by drug use. And seeing that is so hurtful and so harmful. Yeah. And I like I've never known like a close family member who's dealt with that, but like I feel so hurt and right. like, I just feel so jaded when I see that happen mm-hmm. to perfectly good human beings. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right, right. Which I think is uh, what the documentary was touching on is right. just also the race aspect that can be involved in that. Mm-hmm. Um, of you know, some sort of, um, this goes off of marijuana a little bit, mm-hmm. but um, in all drug sense, uh, mm-hmm. like crack cocaine, there's right. such a stronger punishment for just cocaine. Right. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's just embedded in mm-hmm. there. No one really notices it mm-hmm. until our prisons are overpopulated mm-hmm. and uh, families are affected by right. it and you have mm-hmm. start asking questions, right? right? And, and so, um, yeah, I think I agree with you mm-hmm. there about how too many lives have been ruined and I would love to see because I don't I I also think a lot of my experience has been high schoolers using it right I don't think their lives should be ruined Mm -hmm. because of their you know rebellious teen years Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. Um, but I also wanted to go back to something you said earlier too um, just about not seeing a change in your town Mm -hmm. Um, I had a question about it but you were just saying how after it was legalized Mm -hmm. you hadn't seen too much of a, right. a change or not many stores popping up, right? Right, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen many stores popping up and um, I think part of that has to do with not, again, not being there and like only looking at it from the aspect okay. of a high schooler and I'm not right. a high schooler right. anymore. Right, exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. I had a I had a question. Maybe mm-hmm. it will come back to me. Right. Um, but, oh, do you think that if um, it was legalized, um, more people that maybe wouldn't normally or haven't indulged in it before will indulge in it um Mm -hmm. i think it kind of depends on the person because i know there's some people who are thinking of the benefits of marijuana use medicinally like you said Mm -hmm. earlier Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people and i know quite a few people who use marijuana to help them go to sleep right Mm -hmm. or they use it to so that they don't feel as much pain Mm -hmm. but i don't know and this is part of the research that i haven't gone fully in depth with going back to what you're saying yeah but i don't know if there is enough research to like definitively say that marijuana is going to affect this aspect of your care so much so that it is worth taking it to decrease pain mm-hmm. or to cope with your cancer. Mm-hmm. And there's not conclusive research. Right. And that's mm-hmm. the main problem I see with that. So mm-hmm. I know personally, I don't think there would be anyone who would start using it more right. because of that. Maybe the ease of having it legalized. Mm-hmm. And then also there's so many like little, um, I can't think of the word, but there are so many different intricacies within drug use of marijuana and THC versus 
the cannabis without THC right, in right. terms There's of like different. pain relief. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and I would say we probably grew up in very similar areas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Just background. Yeah. <laughs> Kayla and I. <laughs> I've been to we Kayla's know each hometown. Other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and like our areas are definitely very similar. Like yeah. middle class to high class. Yeah. Um, a lot of kids who are pretty privileged, I would say. Right. Um, probably into the same things, yes. so music wise, taste wise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, even like your high, you went to see Homeless. Well. Right. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, I like, I visited the high school. So, right. like, even just seeing that and like seeing younger siblings and friends yes. whose siblings attended right. there. So, I think I share your concern in terms of that fear and that. If that's the one thing that you said that really sticks out to me is that fear of what it can do for developing kids that are still growing, their yes. brains are changing, yeah. mm-hmm. and that whole... Right, yeah. right. And I just asked that because um, I also don't think that people who aren't doing it now will just all of a sudden all do a sudden, it yeah. um, once it becomes legalized. I was just more um, just concerned about or interested, that's right. what I was looking yeah. for, and what you had to say about that, especially after it has been legalized mm-hmm. in California and versus like what you had seen mm-hmm. um but going back to the developing of the mm-hmm. brain i think that is something that really sticks out to me and right. it's because of the age i am i'm sure if i was 40 or 50 i wouldn't think about it right. as much right. you know yeah exactly um but it's just what i see and i do have a younger sibling who mm-hmm. um did participate in a lot of it and it just scared me when he came home and right. ever almost every night and right you know and it's a lot of personal experience but mm-hmm. yeah yeah um but I want to ask this for both of us. Maybe we could touch on it. Like, why do you think we're so fearful of that? Um, so why do you think you're fearful of the well-being, if that makes sense? Just trying to dive in yeah. a little deeper. I think going back to, like, our three different types of identity yeah. issues, I think for me it has more to do with the competency identity. Mm-hmm. And I know for me personally in terms of school, like, I, like I'm like i a pre-med student, so right. like I kind of have to, like, work super hard and just right. and I know I'm not one of those students that's like naturally smart like okay. I have to I'm like out of like all of like my friends that are like very gifted yes. naturally like mm-hmm. up in here I'm like that's not me <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like I have to work really hard yeah, to like really hard. get right. the concepts mm-hmm. down and really do the work to like put in the effort and make sure that I'm doing well in my classes and it goes to show that that is possible if you're disciplined to do that mm-hmm. but also I just have the biggest fear competency wise of like the ramifications of prolonged drug use. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with alcohol, but like since we're talking about marijuana specifically, in terms of what it does to your brain cells, yeah. what it does to your telomeres, in terms of like deterioration right, of that. Right, right. And as someone who studies right. those things. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And like I'm I'm still an undergrad, so I haven't even seen the overall long right. like benefits or ramifications or consequences of prolonged drug use. And mm-hmm. that's something that I would love to dive more into as like I get out of undergrad but it's really a competency thing of just like this affects so many aspects of your life and there are different environmental factors based off of where you live um, who you interact with that can add to um, the drug use itself and Mm -hmm. make it worse or make it better Mm -hmm. and it's just like that's something I'm not willing to play with and I think there's just an intense fear like deep down like I'm just so fearful of like if I do like if I use marijuana like not that I'm gonna die. No, I won't die. But like, <laughs> long term, like I, that's just partially yes. like my personality of like long term. Where are we going with this? So I know for me, like I'm just like, <laughs> right. like I don't have all the answers, and I know I'm not going to have them. But whatever is in my control and whatever I can control, like I need to be able to like make sure that I'm giving myself the best opportunity right. of success. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's like a pretty selfish perspective because it doesn't have to do with anyone else really. No, but it's a personal experience. Right, but, mm-hmm. right, exactly. And just like knowing myself, and I'm like, my contribution to society will be limited if I choose to partake in drugs. I don't mm-hmm. think I have. And, like, I think of genetics, too, as well, with, like, what's passed down to you from your parents. And I don't think there's, like, a history of addiction that I know of and Mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. And we have not had an issue of, like, uh, substance abuse in our family. Mm -hmm. So I just – and so I don't think it's anything like that, but – your brain chemistry can change in so many different ways. So I think I can think about it from a fairly academic right. perspective. Right. Well, <laughs> well, and right, but that's what we're studying right now. So mm-hmm. it makes sense that you're thinking about it in that right. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what about for you? Yeah, I would say uh, I think I shared the example of my brother. Just mm-hmm. seeing him in that state of mind, um, I, it just it it scares me in the sense that we 
I felt like I could have a normal conversation with him mm. um, because he wasn't fully present right. um, and stuff like that. And so it just takes away from our relationship in mm-hmm. a way. Um, but then on top of that, I've just, some of my friends, um, especially going into college when they're away from their parents, it's just what they do every day. Right. Um, it takes a toll on um, their grades, so the academic perspective. Um, I think it's kind of the same view I have on um, alcohol. And so, like, at bigger state schools, people you know, go out on the weeknights and that just right. really Im- that impresses me, but I'm kind of dumbfounded by mm-hmm. it because I always have so much homework or grades are so important to me. And if I don't get enough hours of sleep or I'm not um, sober, or my mind isn't in the um, sober state of mind, mm-hmm. I can't um, focus and do the best that I can on, the ho- right. on homework. And that is, um, I think, as um, someone who's having their parents pay for a lot of college, right. um, I feel this responsibility and for um, my own ambitions of having a career one day. I don't want to just waste um, mm-hmm. right. some of the effort I want to put into my homework. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think same with alcohol. It's like just another fear of adding something else in there. Um, and then even the combination of the two, too, really scares me. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I think that that's when it can become not dangerous in the sense of maybe, I mean, yes, dangerous in the sense of accidents because mm-hmm. if you're drunk, too, then, mm-hmm. you know, that causes issues, but I think it's just a fear of it being another thing that could prohibit students specifically right. from being the best that they could be. Yeah. Um, so I think it's the same fear I have as, as alcohol in general, mm-hmm. um, but like I said, it just feels like in a way legalizing it is encouraging it, mm-hmm. and so I think from a perspective, and I think what you were trying to say as well is as students, it's and having developing brains mm-hmm. is kind of a scary right. yeah. idea to yeah. jeopardize that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's where a lot of my fear comes from. Mm-hmm. And do you feel that your upbringing has influenced how you feel about drug use in general? Because I know obviously right. your brother uses, but you do not. Right. But like, and mm-hmm. your experiences can be totally different in right. how you perceive things. So. Right. Um, yeah, I think it was my upbringing. Um, my family, um, we do have addiction. It's usually with alcohol, so okay. it's not... Um, with drugs necessarily, but I do believe we have an addictive um, kind of gene, or like um, I even find it in other things, like I have an addictive personality almost. Um, So even if it's, there's claims like that it's not addictive, Mm -hmm. like even if that's true, I think that as someone who like would be addicted to the high, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I'm not scared of using on my own, and that's my decision. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that that upbringing has definitely made me more aware of the effects of both alcohol and uh, things like marijuana gotcha. um, and then also with just friends um, I just like I said a lot of times before I have friends that have gone to use every day or even a couple times a day and mm-hmm. that just scares me because a they're never present in our conversations mm-hmm. or um, B it just I definitely saw a change throughout high school or even a change now mm-hmm. there's just I think uh, from my observation, truly a little bit of less ambition, um, just a different way of thinking, which also could come with just growth in general, right. but there's just something about, um, I guess, the correlation of them beginning to smoke um, marijuana a lot, and then where they are now, that right. just kind of stands out to me. Right. Um, and just using anything as an escape scares me, because I don't think that's a way to handle yeah. emotions or feelings or right. a correct way because it's eventually going to come out in a different way. Um, so when people use either that or um, alcohol to escape. It kind of, um, and that's very different than escaping physical pain, yes. in my opinion. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it seems like it's a fear more of how things can escalate over a prolonged period mm-hmm. and then also the why behind why you're using as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my concern with alcohol as well, is why are you using it? Um, If I ever use it, it's because I have crossed off check marks on my list of am I sad, am I stressed out, Mm -hmm. am I trying to get away from any of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think that can just dig a hole um, for abuse of the substance. And um, because I think that both of these things honestly can be enjoyed without, yes, um, without consequences or without... Um, dire, like disastrous, disastrous something. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, but that being said, I think there are there is a lot of room to abuse them, and I think that's what I'm fearful of is 
abusing it. And, you know, like I said, alcohol just has been legalized ever since I've been born. So it's not something I've ever thought about not Mm -hmm. legalizing because Mm -hmm. we're putting restrictions on that are similar to marijuana. So I understand that argument. It's just, I feel like it's just not something I've thought about a lot because it's Mm -hmm. so normalized to me, the alcohol and, like, how I choose to use it, right? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that insight in terms of... Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> I appreciate that insight mm-hmm. on to like the abuse factor because I don't think I think people forget about that. Mm-hmm. And going back to a point that you made earlier from the documentary that you talked about, the mm-hmm. 13th, yes, is mm-hmm. called, um, in terms of the poverty aspect and decriminalizing it in that sense, it's always so conflicting, at least for me, because I feel like that is so important to show people, specifically minority communities, Mm -hmm. that because they had an ounce of weed or even a trace of weed, their life isn't over. Well, right. Mm -hmm. And I think, I I always, again, feel selfish saying that, but like there are a lot of people who use weed recreationally that are not a harm, like they're not harming society. There are much more powerful, stronger, purer drugs on the market, especially like pure cocaine, and that's not really available to people on the streets or people in poverty. Like, they're going to be using crack cocaine, which is mixed with other stuff, mm-hmm. and not nearly as pure as what people can afford to in the top 1% with, yes. like, pure, like, straight-up right. cocaine and, right. like, heroin mm-hmm. and that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's always, like, a weird conflicting balance of how do we decriminalize this in such a way that we're not hurting our poor communities even more so than they've already been hurt. Yes. And mm-hmm. that tension... It's always it's not at the forefront of my brain when I'm thinking right. of like drugs at all. I think we're very similar in yeah. the sense of like the abuse factor. Yes, mm-hmm. is so much more harmful. Right, and mm-hmm. it's just hard to find that balance of how do we give people room to do what feels natural and normal to them? Because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people use drugs for whatever reason but it's a norm in our society right it's not a norm to us it doesn't seem like but it's a norm but it in is society. right 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 mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. when i think of it from that perspective i don't know i don't know how you feel about that in terms of like balancing how you feel morally and just like inside in terms of like that abuse and like comparing that with keeping people out of a bad out of, situation right 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 and i think ultimately come time of the election I'll vote to legalize it for that exact reason yeah. um, I just think that it's also not the root of the problem if right. that makes any sense yes. the root of the problem mm-hmm. is obviously racism classism mm-hmm. yes all of the bigger things that we should tackle you know yeah. what I mean? it yeah. just seems like legalizing it um, which I because I agree there's so many people that I've even seen in my day to day and I grew up in a you know um, predominantly white high school mm-hmm. but high school students that would get sev- in severe trouble because of right. their you know possession but th- mm-hmm. it's like almost just kids being kids in a way yes, you know exactly. um, so yes I definitely agree with that and I think ultimately that will trump my um, abuse sorry I think someone might need this room in a okay. second but mm-hmm. trump my uh, abuse concern okay. but it's just something that I needed to vocally process mm-hmm. a and then it's just the th- something that is holding me back from totally forming a belief because of just both how I grew up right um, what I was taught and then also yeah. just what I've seen with my own eyes right so, exactly yeah mm-hmm. oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> so, full circle. We've come full circle. The full circle. But, yes, so um, I What's think someone like? needs this room. Right. But I also feel like we've covered a lot of... A lot of the bases yes. of what we yes. wanted to talk about in this dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. delving further into why you believe what you believe in terms of like the fear aspect of that abuse. Right. And really how that can affect mm-hmm. how you live your life and how right. you can see that market difference in Mm -hmm. behaviors of people you care so deeply Mm -hmm. about that and I love that care aspect thank you yeah Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's awesome thank you and I really appreciate you sharing um, your perspective as well I was really excited to do this with you because I was also going into it with the hope of being more educated on some of um, the aspects of it because I've only been hit with really the pros and cons of everything I haven't really Mm -hmm. been hit with um, a personal perspective Mm -hmm. or anything like that so um, I appreciate you talking about your hometown and how it's affected it there with the legalization, um, how we shared our fear of abuse, mm-hmm. and then also um, 
just bringing up the war on drugs persona right. and the decriminalization because it's such an important point that right. we need to address. Yeah. So, awesome. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you. <laughs>